Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Murder, we are told, will out. As will, I believe, truth. Which is to say that most murderers, though not all, are eventually exposed and made to pay for what is considered certainly the most heinous crimes of all. The taking of another's life. Such was the case with the charming, debonair, and totally amoral Greg Manchester, who felt sure he had committed the perfect murder, only to discover... You're arresting me for murder? Lieutenant, you can't be serious. I'm very serious, Mr. Manchester. But uh, well, on what grounds? Yes, I shot and killed my wife, but it was an accident. No accident, Mr. Manchester. Cold-blooded murder. And we can prove it. How can you prove murder when there was no murder? It was an accident, I tell you. I only wish to heaven there had been a witness to prove what I say. There was a witness, Greg. A witness who can prove it was murder. Who, Sandy? Tell me who. The corpse, Greg. The corpse. <laughs> mystery drama, The Eye of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Joan Hackett. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When it comes to murder, it sometimes seems to me that the cleverer a murderer, the more certain he is to be caught. For as the annals of crime reveal, he tends to outsmart himself. Dr. Crippen, Landrieu, George Joseph Smith, to mention but a few, all without exception, flatter themselves on having committed perfect crimes. When in truth, they had trapped themselves by overlooking one single minor little detail. As did a certain gentleman named Gregory Manchester. Listen. Murder? You are accusing me, Sandy, of planning to murder your mother? Is that what you say? Don't twist my words, Greg. I said it wouldn't surprise me if she had a fatal accident and died suddenly. Oh, Sandy, don't even speak of such things. Just the thought makes my heart skip a beat. I'm sorry, Rose. How is your heart? Oh, same. Mother thinks I ought to see another doctor. Sandy, I'm sorry you feel about me as you do. I hope when I married your mother that you'd become as much my friend as your sister has. Why, if you could have heard me talking about you at my club, how proud I was going to be to have the famous photographer, Sandy Oakes, for a stepdaughter. Can't we be friends, Sandy? Friends? Friends? <laughs> Sorry, Greg, but your charm is wasted on me. You charmed my mother into marrying you, charmed her into turning over all of her money to you, charmed her into taking out a $100,000 life policy with you as a beneficiary, well, but... Well, now, my dear, why not? After all, Sandy, I am her husband. And a fast worker. All right, less than a month. You certainly haven't wasted any time getting this marriage to pay off for you. Oh, now you're accusing me of marrying your mother for her money. Is that it, my dear? You can believe it. Oh, now, Sandy. Rose, it's true, and I'm telling you straight out. This clothes horse with his blonde hair and his Sir Walter Raleigh manners is nothing more than a shop operator. A con artist. And that's what I've come here to tell my mother, and I will tell her if she ever gets out of that bath and comes down here. Sandy, you're all upset. Upset? I'm steaming, and I've been steaming ever since I heard about this new life insurance policy. When Mother phoned and said that she'd just taken out a $100,000 policy with dear Greggy as a beneficiary, I could have... Oh, what is that? What? Oh, it's a stain on the ceiling. It's a water stain. The bathroom is just above us oh, here. Oh, now, don't tell me the tub's overflowed. What? If your mother's had another of her fainting spells in the bath. Oh. You better get up there. Come on. What fainting spells? Mother's never had a fainting spell in oh, her no, life. Oh, no, you're wrong there, Sandy. She never told you, but she's had a number of them. Sudden blackout oh. since your father died. The shock of his death, I, I don't know. And she's had two since we married a month ago. God grant she hasn't had another. Not while well, taking... Oh, here we are. Oh, no. Mother? Mother! 
killed her, Joe. He killed her. Now, sweetheart, Joe, he you... did. He drowned her in that tub. All of that talk about sudden fainting spells blackouts. No way, Joe. No way. Now, look, my dear lovable bride-to-be, I don't like Gregory Manchester any more than you do. And I couldn't agree more that he's the phony you claim he is, but... You're no fool, Sandy. <laughs> a camera nut, maybe, with that camera of yours always slung around your neck. But you... Joe, photography is my business, and I don't, I don't know how many pictures I'd have missed if I didn't keep this high-powered instrument ready at all times. And really, I don't know why it bothers you. <laughs> it's nothing. Oh, excuse me. Yes. 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 Have them come right in. Manchester and your sister. I'm going to try to get Rose to move in with me now that Mother's gone. Come in, Rose. Mr. Manchester. Thank you. Hello, Sandy. Hello. How are you feeling, Rose? Oh, all right. I want to talk with you privately after the reading of Mother's will. What about, Sandy? Later, dear. Uh, well, we're all here, so I'll get started. Uh, I... Geraldine Oaks, Manchester, a resident of the city of... Wait a minute, Gerald. Yes? Geraldine Oaks, Manchester? Your mother made a new will after she married Mr. Manchester, didn't she tell you? No. But she told me she was going to. She didn't. I'm sure I know why. Another slap at me, Sandy. Are you implying I changed her mind about telling you? If the shoe fits, Greg. Now, now, hold it, please. We're here for the reading of a will, and I suggest we get on with it. I, Geraldine Oaks, Manchester, a resident of this city. Lastly, I hereby revoke all former wills and codicils to wills heretofore by me made. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and seal this tenth day of October, signed Geraldine Oaks, Manchester, and witnessed, etc., 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 well, Mr. Manchester, you've inherited quite a fortune. Plus a hundred thousand dollars in insurance. While Rose gets nothing, nor do I. Well, as your mother stated in her will, Sandy, she trusted me. Implicitly trusted me to see that Rose was well cared for. And you? I don't need Mother's money, but Rose... Oh, Sandy, you can trust Greg. Mother did. I do. I know you do, Rose. You trust everyone. You always have. Possibly because she hasn't let the world make her as cynical as it has made you. Oh, now, just a minute, Mr. Manchester. I can take care of myself, Joe. More important, I can take care of Rose, and I mean to. But, Sandy, I'm going to be all right. Greg will... Leave you to starve if I know Greg, but he isn't going to because I'm not going to let him. I'm going to break this will. Sandy... I you... mean it, Joe. He conned Mother and he fleeced her. Well, you're not going to get away with it, Greg. I'll break this will if it's the last thing that I do. And uh, may I ask exactly how, my dear? By proving you murdered my mother and meant to murder her from the start. Have some more Chambre Creole, Florence? Oh, Greg, darling, I couldn't. I simply couldn't. You know I'm on a diet. Oh, nonsense. This is no time to stay on a diet. In the first place, it's Mardi Gras week. In the second, I've brought you to the finest restaurant in New Orleans. Oh, you dear, delightful man. And in the third place, why anyone with your figure feels the need to diet, that baffles me utterly. Oh, oh, you are a dear and delightful man. Greg Manchester, you are almost as... No, I'll say it. You are as dear and delightful as my late husband. Oh, Greg, I'm so glad we met. So glad. Well, so am I, Florence. You know, only a week ago, I was the loneliest man on earth. Oh. Lonely in the way only the bereaved can be lonely. Even though it's months since Geraldine passed on, I thought I would never get over her loss. And then... Well, then, my dearest... You don't mind if I call you my dearest? Of course not. Well, I met you, and life became worth living again. Oh, Greg, do you know that seems exactly the way I felt? Feel? Ah, I thought as much. Oh. We've known each other only a week, my dear, but what a week it has been. Oh, yes. And for my part, Florence, I... You won't be offended. No, no. Well, for my part, you're the woman I've been looking for since my own dear Geraldine passed on. Oh, a woman I felt sure I would never, never find. Oh, Greg. Greg, you dear man. 
Then you're not offended. Offended? It wouldn't be if I... Well, if I... If you what, darling? If I asked you to become my wife. Oh. Oh, dear, I have offended you. No. No. Oh, oh you've made me so happy. I think I'm going to cry. In fact, I know I am. Uh, uh, Greg, what? Is, is something wrong? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, but uh, excuse me a moment, Florence. I'll be right back. Well, Sandy Oaks, girl photographer, camera and all. Greg Manchester, con artist and murderer, next victim and all. What are you doing in New Orleans? Mardi Gras week. I'm covering it. For Cosmopolite. You're lying. You found out I was living in New Orleans. You followed me here. Uh, care to see my press credentials? If Cosmopolite sent you, you asked for the assignment. <laughs> How right you are. Now you listen to me. Any more trouble from you and I'll make you know what trouble really is. Trouble? What makes you think I'm out to give you trouble, Greg? Because you followed me here. Because I suddenly spotted you snapping a picture of me and Mrs. Chapman. I took more than one before you noticed me, Greg. They may come in handy. I don't see how. <clears throat> well, then, look over there, Greg. See that sign? The one that reads Mardi Gras Week? Exactly. From that angle, I caught not only you and Mrs. Chapman, but that sign hanging behind you on the wall. So what? The time element, Greg. And the place. I can hear a district attorney saying to you at your trial for murder, quote, you did know the widow, Mrs. Florence Chapman, as early as Mardi Gras week, didn't you? In New Orleans, wasn't it? Unquote. My murder trial. You are going to kill her, aren't you? For her money? After you marry her? Tell me, does she have any children you can leave penniless as you did my sister Rose? She went to live with you. You're very successful, plenty of dough. You take care of her. I am. I'm also going to take care of you. Now, Sandy, I warn you. Cool it. Con man, I am not my mother that you're talking to now, nor my sister Rose, or that lovely victim of yours over there. A photographer gets around. You think you're the cleverest thing that ever happened. You are. But, Buster, it's your cleverness that's going to put you behind bars, because somewhere, somehow, you're going to think you're so clever that you'll make one little mistake, one fatal little mistake, and when you do, I'm going to be there. Be smart, eh? Get out of my life and stay out Excuse of my... Excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt, but, Greg, dear, won't you introduce me to that very attractive friend here? Well, dearest? Yes, of course, uh, Sandy Oaks, my stepdaughter. Oh, oh you're not... The daughter of that poor woman who... who drowned accidentally. Yes, Mrs. Chapman, I am. You know my... Oh, Greg told you. No, I've been watching you and Mr. Manchester ever since he met you a week ago. Watching? Greg, darling, what does she mean? Oh, never mind, Florence. She's a troublemaker. She tried to stop me from marrying her mother. I tried to stop you from murdering my mother. Oh, gracious, such talk... You're in a restaurant. Mrs. Chapman, uh, let me give you a tip. A tip that will save your life. Say goodbye right now to this charming, well-dressed murderer. Say goodbye and go on living. Well, Greg. Uh, Greg, I believe you're right. This girl... Well, I don't know what she is, but she is. I'm sorry I came over. I'll wait for you at our table. Uh, yes, sir. yes, yes, of course, Florence. Well, do you see? Mm. She's as naive and as trusting as my mother. And my sister. Or others you've murdered. Oh, so it's others now. Look, Sandy, you said I'm clever. Well, I am clever. A hell of a lot cleverer than you are, doll. I guess the only way to get you off my neck is to prove it. And just how will you do that? The only way I know. Murder. Don't get me all choked up. I know you. I'm ready for anything you try. Murder me? You don't have much of a chance, Mr. Manchester. Oh, murder you. No, 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 not you. Who, then? Your sister Rose, whom you love so much. Who else? Yeah. 
Inevitably, it had to come to this. The challenge. The squaring off. The gauntlet flung down between a cold-blooded murderer and a self-sufficient girl like Sandy Oaks, who's been around. Is she right? Will Greg Manchester make that one fatal mistake she says he will? Perhaps we'll find out when I return for Act Two. Much has been written on the psychology of murder and murderers. And although experts disagree, when have experts ever done anything else, there seems little question that the common motive for murder is personal gain. In any case, assuredly, that's what it is with Greg Manchester, who, you might say, marries for murder. But now Sandy Oakes, veteran freelance photographer, has set out to prove that Manchester murdered her mother, even as Manchester threatens that if she doesn't leave him alone, he will kill her invalid sister, Rose. Sandy, your mother drowned in her bath after suffering a blackout. My mother never had a blackout, a fainting spell in her life. Manchester spread that story to cover himself. Yeah, but you can't prove it. And until you can, I'm warning you, drop it. I'm not afraid of a suit for libel or slander, if that's what you mean. What I mean is, I'm afraid for your life, if what you say is true. It's Rose's life I'm worried about. If anything happened to me, she'd be alone and penniless. You don't ever have to worry about Rose while I'm around. You know that. Of course not. But, good Lord, I didn't realize it was this late. I've got to rush. What? Just when I was about to invite you to lunch? I'm sorry, darling, but I'm due at the Metropolitan Photographic Exhibit in half an hour. I promised to advise the committee on how to hang the prize exhibits. Oh, including one of yours. Uh, which reminds me, I owe you an apology. Uh, an apology because I won a prize? Well, I'm always kidding you about carrying that fancy camera of yours, but if you hadn't had it with you and shot from the hip that day, <laughs> you'd never have caught that picture of an old man being mugged. And the muggers. Oh, the cops nail them because of what I photographed. Which reminds me, I've got to see Lieutenant McCoy at headquarters after the photo exhibit. What for? The information I dug up in New Orleans about Greg Manchester. Now, it may not mean anything to you, darling, but I'm hoping it will mean plenty to Lieutenant McCoy. <laughs> It means nothing to me, Sandy, nothing at all. But, Mac... Sandy, I checked it out. Yeah, sure, Manchester was married before he met your mother. And sure, his wife died of an overdose of sleeping pills, but the coroner's verdict was death by accident. Oh, Mac, you put me away. You really do. I don't get you. His wife dies of an overdose of sleeping pills, and he inherits over $50,000. He marries my mother. She dies by drowning. He inherits every cent she has plus an insurance of $100,000, taken out less than a month before. Two deaths, two so-called accidents, and Greg Manchester hits the financial jackpot. That doesn't strike you as fishy? Oh, yes, but I... Now he's going to marry this other wealthy widow, Florence Chapman, less than three months after my mother dies. Sandy... Oh, and he, he threatens to kill my sister Rose if I don't lay off, and you sit there and you tell me that you don't think that Manchester is a cold-blooded murderer. No, I didn't say that. I said he's clean, Sandy. As a cop, I gotta play it by the book, the rules of evidence. Maybe Manchester did kill your mother and his previous wife, but I haven't got a shred of evidence to prove he did. And neither of you. Well, I have you. No. No, but I'm going to get it. Sooner or later, Manchester is going to make one slip. One little slip, and I'm going to be there when he does. <laughs> Taking pictures of him as he does, I'll bet. It isn't funny, Mac. No, I'm just cracking wise about you and your trusty companion, that camera. Laugh. But it caught you a couple of muggers, and Mac, it may catch me a murderer. <laughs> There's a bench, Rose. Want to sit for a while? Oh, no, Sandy, no. I, I, I'm too excited to sit still. You're too excited, period. Oh, I'll be all right. Oh, it's such a thrill for me just to get out of that apartment. But on top of that, these wonderful pictures. Holzman, Eisenstadt, Kepler, and you... That's what I call really sisterly love. Putting me in that class. Oh, you won a first prize. 
Yes, but in photojournalism, and there's nothing arty about my stuff. A first prize is a first prize, and I'm not going to argue. Uh, oh, Rose. Oh, Sandy, maybe I'd better sit down for a minute or two. Yes, yes, right there. How, now, how bad is it? Uh, it's, it's not bad, but Sandy, would you open my bag and take out the bottle of nitro pills? Yeah, just a sec. Here, wait, wait a moment now. Here oh. we are, here. Stay here. I'll get you a cup of water. Yes. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. I, I just want to get through to the water cooler. We're here. Let me help you. Thank you. You. Yes, me. What are you doing here, Greg? Mrs. Manchester wanted to see the exhibits. She married you then. And I wanted to see you. Figured you'd be here, so I... Uh... I've got no time for you now. I've got to get a cup of water for my sister. Well, here's the cup. There's the water. I, uh, want a word with you, Sandy, about... Would you uh... get out of my way? Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Rose. Rose, dear. Here you are. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Thank you. you are you better? Yes. Much. I think that we'd better go. Sandy, I haven't seen everything yet. Your heart. Oh, drat my heart. My first day out of the apartment in weeks. I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to see everything there is to see. Oh, look who's here. Hello, Rose. How are you, Greg? Never better. You? Pretty well. Thank you. I meant to call on you when I got back from New Orleans, but I felt your sister wouldn't approve. You're right, Greg. Her sister oh, wouldn't. Oh, now you too. Oh, it's all right, Rose. It's all right. Sandy and I aren't going to have a scene. I only want to say hello. So, if you'll excuse me, I'll rejoin my wife. Goodbye, Rose. Goodbye, Sandy. Oh, um, give my regards to Lieutenant McCoy next time you see him, would you? Lieutenant McCoy? The police lieutenant you went to see this morning. About a certain little matter... How do you know that I want to see McCoy? And what I want to see him about? Oh, does it matter? I know. I think it was very foolish of you, Sandy. Do you? Oh, yes, very. In fact, as I intimated to you in New Orleans, it could even be dangerous. Deadly dangerous. Not for you. Not immediately for you. Well, goodbye for now. Sandy, what was that all about? Nothing, Rose. Nothing. What did Greg mean? It could be deadly dangerous. It's, uh... It's nothing for you to worry about, Rose. Well, all right, if you say so. Funny, though. What? I'm worried somehow. Suddenly, I'm... I'm very worried. <laughs> Nice to see you. Come in. How are you, Rose? Oh, I'm fine. Fine. Now, now, no fibs to your brother-in-law to be. What? I talked to Sandy on the phone. She oh. said your heart gave you a little trouble at the photography exhibition this afternoon. Oh, nothing my nitro pills couldn't handle and did. Oh, good, good. Where's Sandy? <laughs> Three guesses. The dark room. Give the man a cigar. Or would you rather have a drink? A drink, and I'll make it. I'll make it. Uh, Sandy said you ran into Greg Manchester at the exhibition. Yes. I'm worried, Joe. About what? Greg said a funny thing to Sandy. It seems he heard somehow she'd gone to see police lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant McCloy. Uh, McCoy. Uh, McCoy, uh, about something. He didn't say what. And Sandy wouldn't tell me, but anyhow, he said he thought she was very foolish to do anything like that. And that it could be deadly dangerous. Those were the words he used. Deadly dangerous. I see. Sandy didn't tell you? No, she didn't. But not for her. That was the funny part of what he said. Not deadly dangerous for her. Not immediately. <gasps> Rose. Rose, what is it? Uh, heart. Pain. Chest. Your nitroglycerin pills. Uh, they, they, they... Sandy. Oh. Sandy! Oh, oh, what is it? Oh, no. Where are pills? Our uh, 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 bedroom. I'll, I'll get them. Uh, Rose, uh, Rose, now let me get you to the couch. Uh, lay you down here. Uh, ah, there. Uh, there's a cushion behind your head. Sandy, hurry up! Uh, 
Oh, yes, yes, here. Here, Rose. Oh, open your mouth. That's it. Uh, water, Joe? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Joe. Yeah, here you are. Uh, oh, oh, all right now, honey. Swallow the pills. Uh, Swallow it, dear. That's it. That's it. Okay, all right. Sure to be all right in a moment or two. Rose? Rose, dear? Is it having any effect? Oh, Rose, is the pain letting up? Rose? Rose? Joe! Joe, she... Here, let me... She, she's gone, Sandy. Oh, no. No. I'm afraid so, sweetheart. He's done it. He threatened he wouldn't, he has. Greg Manchester? He said he'd kill her if I didn't lay off, and I didn't, and he has. Thank you, Mac. Goodbye. What did he say, McCoy? The toxicology lab tested the pills Rose took. That I gave her. Oh, Sandy. All right, come on now, honey. The pills. They found that they were triple strength. Triple the amount of nitroglycerin prescribed for Rose. It's impossible. No pharmacist would make a mistake like that. The pharmacist didn't. They got him out of bed and they met him at his place and checked his records. He made no mistake. Well, then how... Sandy, how... Greg! Sandy. Don't ask me how he did it. He got into the apartment, maybe, while we were out. Rose and I... I didn't change the bottles. I don't know. It doesn't matter. All that matters to me is that he did it. And I know in my bones I know that he did it. He murdered the woman he was married to before he married my mother. He killed my mother. He killed Rose. He'll kill Florence Chapman. He'll kill me. Unless I stop him. He's got to be stopped, Joe. Stopped and put behind bars like any other animal. And that's where I'm going to put him. With God's help, Joe, that's where I'll put him for the rest of his life. Brave words. Words spoken under the pressure of emotion. Well, I think I can tell you at this point that Sandy did put Greg Manchester behind bars for the rest of his life when he made that one fatal slip. He, well, I was about to say that he overlooked something. But the fact is... He never saw it, but Sandy did. Or, to be more precise, her camera did. I'll return in a moment for Act Three. You will recall my saying earlier that the cleverer the murderer, the more likely he is to make one fatal slip. Something so minor, he never thought of it, never noticed it. What slip will Greg Manchester make? So far, he's got away with his killings. Sandy Oaks doesn't know where Greg Manchester will make that fatal slip, or when. Or more particularly, how. But make it, she knows he will. And as I've told you, make it he did. The question is, what insignificant but very final mistake did he make you dare you dare show your face here i came here to this funeral home to see rose for the last time i am her stepfather sandy and have the right murderer sandy get him out of here joe it's no need joe i'm going may i have a word with you outside of course sandy pull yourself together Well, Joe, you're a lawyer. Would you give me some advice? What am I to do with her? She hates me. Has hated me from the moment we met. I don't know why. Chemistry, I suppose. Not much I can say to that, Greg, except you're a liar. 
I beg your pardon? You're a liar. It isn't chemistry between you and Sandy. It's Sandy's awareness, her awareness from the first, her trained awareness, because she's photographed so many people, that you're a phony. I agreed with her about that after only short acquaintance with you, Greg, but I didn't agree with her that you're a murderer. I agree now. You can't mean... You think I murdered Geraldine? I think you murdered Geraldine and Rose. I think you murdered another woman. In fact, probably other women. You can stand there and to my face say... Say it because it's obvious. There's such a thing as coincidence, Greg. But your history, your married history, goes beyond coincidence. Then you are calling me a murderer. I thought I'd made that plain. You're skating on thin ice now, and you're going to go through it. And when you do, you're going to find the water bitter cold, Greg. Bitter cold. Won't you sit down, Miss Oakes? Thank you, Mrs. Manchester. Let me say, I only agreed to see you when you phoned and said you wanted to talk with me alone. I only agreed because you are his stepdaughter. Mrs. Manchester, I wanted to see you because someone should warn you. Greg Manchester is a murderer. What are you saying? He murdered my mother. He murdered my sister, Rose. He murdered the woman he was married to before he met my mother. He's going to murder you. My dear, do you realize the gravity of this accusation? The important thing is that you realize... What well, I the... realize is that you are a bitter and malicious young woman who, for some reason, I am totally unable to understand, wants to malign a man who has never done anything but good for you. Good? What do you mean? Your mother left him all her money, didn't she? Yes. He was also the beneficiary of her life insurance, wasn't he? Yes. And all of this... The fortune he might have had, he turned over to you and your sister. Is that not so? It certainly is not so. Greg told me. Then he lied. He tricked my mother into giving him control of her money, power of attorney and all of that, and then taking out a $100,000 life insurance policy, and then he killed her. Can you prove that? N no. I can't, not yet. But whether I can or not, I think... What you should keep in mind is that at least two previous wives have died suddenly and mysteriously after giving him control of their money. Have you? Why, why, yes, I have. Oh, but I can't believe this. I won't believe it. My husband is one of the most dear and delightful men I've ever met. Thank you, my dear. Thank you for your trust in me. Greg... We didn't hear you come in. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Otherwise, I'd not have overheard my stepdaughter's accusations. Sandy, I must ask you to leave. And please, don't come back. Goodbye, Mrs. Manchester. And good luck. Well, I hope that's the last we see of her. I'm sure you didn't believe the lies she must have told about me. Why, well, no, of of course not, Greg. You don't sound altogether sure, Florence. Why, y yes, I, I am. Only, Greg, you told me you had handed all your former wife's fortune over to her daughters. No, 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 what? no. Well, you misunderstood me. I... I said that I intended to do it. But I haven't had time to get around to it yet. It's quite involved, you know. Certain legalities which take time and... You don't believe me, do you? No, 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 I, I do, I do. Only I'm, I'm certain you said you had already given them the money. No, you're mistaken, my dear. Greg. Yes? Uh, that power of attorney I signed the other day. Uh, yes? Don't be offended, dear, but just as a matter of interest, does it give you uh, control o over my money? Now, that's an odd question, Florence. Does it, Greg? Well, the power of attorney is just that. It empowers me to act in your behalf. In, in other words, you can sign checks, withdraw money from my account, that, that, that sort of thing? 
Yes, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I see. No, 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 no. I don't think you do. For instance, you don't see that you have just signed your death warrant. Death warrant? I want you to go into your bedroom. Start packing. Packing? You're going to visit your sister in New Orleans. Midnight. Make the call, Florence. Make it or I'll shoot you right now. Miss Oaks, this is Mrs. Manchester. Yes? I've, I, I've got to see you right away. Could you come here to my apartment? Uh, my fancy and I were just about... It's urgent, Miss Oaks. Dreadfully urgent. Please, please come. Of course, all right. We'll be there as soon as we can make Oh, thank it. you. Goodbye. She's coming right over? Yes. Greg, please don't kill me. I'm sorry, Florence. I'll give you my money. I've already got it. Then why kill me? Pleasure, my dear. Simple pleasure. I find a certain thrill in murdering someone, especially silly women like you. When Sandy pushes that door buzzer, listen to it carefully, Florence. It'll be the last sound you hear in this life. <laughs> I must uh, snap off the lights here in the bedroom. Oh, good. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, help me. Help me. Help me. We heard a shot. What? The... Yeah, in the bedroom. I just shot a prowler. Pitch dark in here. The light switch. Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, good Lord. Florence Manchester. What? 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Sandy, for the love of... This is no time for snapping pictures. I wasn't even aware I was... Get to the phone. Call the police. And put that damn camera away. Yes, yes, okay. Oh. I thought Florence was a prowler. I lost my head. I, I fired into the dark room. Headquarters? Uh, uh, give me a uh, Lieutenant McCoy. Is he there? Yeah, uh, yeah, hurry. Sandy, Sandy, please. Look at it, uh, Joe. Look at it and tell me, what do you see? Uh, I see the body of Florence Manchester lying on her bedroom floor. I have seen the body of Florence Manchester lying on her bedroom floor for over a month now, in blow-up after blow-up after blow-up of the pictures you snapped that night. This blow-up, Good Lord, Sandy, it's the biggest yet. Why? Because these pictures prove Greg murdered Florence, that's why. You keep saying that, but you don't tell me what proof. Because, I don't know. Because it's staring at me in the face and I can't see it. Joe, look at it, please, just look at it. Look. No. Joe, just look. I've had it, Sandy. All right. Maybe, like you say, Greg's story of what happened was so much eyewash. Maybe Florence didn't leave to visit her sister in New Orleans. Maybe she didn't come back unexpectedly while he was asleep in his bedroom. Maybe he didn't hear a noise in her bedroom, think it was a prowler, panic and shoot into the darkened bedroom. Eyewash. All eyewash. But don't... What is it? Eyewash. Eyewash. Give me that blow-up. Ooh, with pleasure. That's it, Joe. That's it. What's what? The proof that he murdered her. The proof I've been looking for but couldn't see. Joe Florence Manchester's eyes. Look at her eyes. Manchester, you've been booked on a charge of murder. The murder of your wife, Florence. Now look here, Take Lieutenant. it easy. Thanks to your stepdaughter, Sandy Oaks, here, we have positive proof that you deliberately and with malice of forethought Shot Florence Manchester to death. What proof? What proof? I told you, she packed her bag. You saw it in the bedroom and left to visit her sister in New Orleans. But had come back unexpectedly, according to your story. And I fired a shot into her pitch-black bedroom, thinking she was a prowler. That's what happened. That's the truth. No. No, it's a lie. 
This photograph of your wife's body, Sandy took it within a minute or two after the shot was fired. So? Look at it, Manchester. Look especially at the eyes. The eyes that are open and staring at the ceiling. What do you see? Her eyes. What else am I supposed to see? The size of her pupils. Look at the pupils of her eyes. Tell me what you see. I see the pupils of her eyes. Contracted. Contracted to the size of a pinhead. I... The human eye is like a camera, like that Instamax Sandy always carries. The darker an object or a place, the wider the pupil of the eye expands. The brighter an object or a place, such as your wife's bedroom, the narrower the pupil becomes, contracts. What's more, Manchester, when a person is killed instantly, as your wife was, the pupil remains unchanged for two to three minutes. Just saying. Just saying it. The photo says it. Not me. You stated that you fired that shot into a dark bedroom, killing your wife by accident. Her eyes, contracted to pinhead size, prove that she died in a lighted room. A brightly lighted room. I... If you have anything to say, make it in the form of a confession, won't you? Uh, on second thought, I'm not sure we need bother. It's all on film, Manchester. A picture, they say, is worth a thousand words. And so it would seem that Lieutenant McCoy is right. No words of Manchester's in his defense could possibly disprove the truth of his wife's dead, accusing eyes. I'll be back shortly. Gregory Manchester is no longer a name, but a number at State's Prison. Sandy's name has changed, too. From Miss Sandy Oakes to Mrs. Joseph Norman. Hasn't changed her habit of carrying that camera wherever she goes, however. But she seems to use it more and more these days, snapping pictures of a baby named Joe Jr., our cast included Joan Hackett, Ralph Bell, Robert Dryden, and Joan Shea. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Mrs. Tipton, it's really hard to see where I'd fit in. Uh, I'm a trained social worker. That's how I make my living. At least, that was how I made my living. I was discharged six months ago. They were cutting down and... Uh, well, I haven't been able to find anything in my field, and I'm running short of money, so... So I'm willing to take almost any kind of job if it's respectable. Look, I'm not going to ask you to do anything you wouldn't ordinarily do. But do you need a secretary? Something like that? I think I could manage that, maybe. Or... Or be a companion. Oh, I don't want a secretary or a companion. Why would I? I never do anything, and I... I prefer being alone. Well... What is it that you do want? I want somebody to live for me. To... to live for you? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams? <laughs> <laughs>